Hello, my name is Cal Molone from Richmond, Virginia, and I'm an anarchist. I'm Matt Badalioli, I'm from Richmond, Virginia, and I'm also an anarchist. And today we resume our Spreading Anarchy series, in which we're here once more at the campus at VCU to, to end the state, to resume our campaign against uh, the tyranny that is government. Uh, and uh, basically talk to people about it. Yeah, so we're going to, I guess, find a lot of people who are open and receptive to, to the free market, to a voluntary society, to, to I guess, uh, a place in, in here in Richmond that's based on consensual relationships. And so we're going to resume what we've been doing. And with that, hopefully you uh, stay with us. And we appreciate any uh, donations that go our way to handle and pay for a lot of the pamphlets that we pass out. So with that, I'll see you guys at the Verkey Party. Take good care. So I'm just going to ask you three simple questions. Okay. Very briefly discuss how government is moral and then uh, ask what your thoughts and comments are. Sounds cool? cool. All right, first question. In your day-to-day -day life, do you use violence to solve your personal problems? No. Uh, second question. Uh, with the exception of self-defense of yourself and other people, would you consider it wrong and immoral to initiate that violence? I think so, yeah. Right? And then the last question would be, would you also consider it wrong and immoral to violently force your ideas onto other people? Yeah. All right, perfect. Then. So you're assuming in your day-to-day -day life, you have a plurality of non-violent solutions you apply and use to solve your personal problems, right? You have this more integrity against that violence. And as a community of individual people here in Richmond, we're taught, though, the only way we can affect any kind of change or make any kind of difference, though, is through politics, right? Through government. So they tell us to vote. So people vote with their ideas and opinions and preferences and how best to solve that community problem and, in effect, they elect the politician, right? That politician, his early job is to legislate those ideas and opinions into law. And then those laws of opinions are then backed and enforced by the police at gunpoint. Right? You could take a uh, government uh, opinion that cannabis is bad for everyone, right? So if I were to smoke a plant, or if you were to smoke a plant, you'd be kidnapped, arrested, thrown into a cage, a prison, and at any point refuse or resist because you don't agree with that idea and try to escape, you'd be met with more violence than sometimes shot, murdered, right? And at the same time, government has even found it to more violence because at no point can you say, I do want to help the poor, but I don't want to fund war. Right? You have no freedom of economic choice. You still have to give me your money. You still have to give up your property. You still have to pay your taxes. Because if you did have a freedom of economic choice of what to do with your own money, with your own property, government wouldn't threaten to send you to another cage if you didn't pay your taxes. And wasn't the original point was not to tax us? Right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. For 3% for, uh, uh, tea and then increase it to 25% uh, on uh, whiskey, right? Yeah, we took like the history class together in high school, so we, we remember Houston. Oh. We remember P. Fran. So, so that's how government is more. This, this organization only knows how to solve problems through one way, a singular way, and that's through the threat of and use of violence to solve any problems versus so the plurality of non-violence solutions So you and I, us three here, already share. So what are your thoughts on that? I think, uh, honestly, like, I don't think government should impose upon us, but it takes more than one voice to raise up and say that this is enough and that we've had enough. Right. So that's quite, personally my point of view on it. Right, and in this, uh, and there's so much. Uh, if, if, there were, if it was an option, like you're saying, should that means like uh, you should pay taxes or you should not. I mean, kind of implying like you have a freedom of economic choice to cancel or unsubscribe as you would any other good or services. Like Netflix started to raise the prices, and people cancel or unsubscribe went to who, right? Uh, when government increases property taxes, income taxes, uh, sales taxes, you don't have that freedom to cancel or unsubscribe, right? So what government is uh, objectively, they have a monopoly on the services you and I want. I do want security. I want roads. I want, uh, I want delivery of mail, right? Even USPS has a monopoly on first class mail. It is illegal and criminal for like UPS and FedEx to deliver pieces of paper. They could only deliver packages, right? So essentially, what's, that's kind of what government is. They not only uh, per uh, forbid you from having the freedom to cancel and subscribe as you would any other real business service, but it also prevents you, it's criminal for you to compete against those monopolies. Uh, so it's not so much as a uh, and I guess an option of should is that government does that. That's how it's they, definitional. Yeah, it's, it's objectively that's what they do. If you don't pay your taxes, they throw you into a cage. If you try to compete against USPS, they'll charge you a fine. If you don't pay that fine, well, we'll come and collect uh, the property. And if you resist, uh, you'll be met with sometimes a uh, deadly force. Yeah. Right. Um, so I guess uh, w w with that in mind, uh, I guess what what do you think then of uh, government? I also don't like government. I, I think there's <laughs> nice. a bunch of idiots in government. But that's just my personal opinion. Right. I mean, if we take a look at like when Obama was like going against the other um, opponent, 
and they were doing like their like speak like their, well you remember the talk like they were yeah. doing like their talk or whatever. And it was just back and forth like fallacies like they weren't actually arguing. More concerned about what color tie they're wearing and like. Anything. Yeah, it's yeah. more like. It's, it's like not, a beauty pageant. Yeah, pretty yeah. much. It's not about the actual issues that people want solved. Right. And if you take a look, like our systems are fucked at this point. Like no, no, you, you can curse. It's perfectly fine. Um, like most of our systems are like fucked at this point because right. of what government's not doing. Like, and also, I think well, who was it that said like. If Thomas Jefferson said, like, if government becomes too powerful, the people should rise up. Yeah, well, a lot of people said that. Yeah. I said that. <laughs> so, I, mean, I think, honestly, we should stand up for what we want. I'm just thinking, like, I'm not prone towards violence. I'm right. trying to think of a way that we could stand up without... <laughs> There is a way to stand up. Uh, this is like people in the past stood up against slavery, right? We were very vocal about it. Uh, there's a guy, Lysander Spooner, this guy who challenged one of the monopolies on uh, delivering pieces of paper. He created his own company. Government didn't like that, passed a law, and made it illegal for anyone to compete because he did it cheaper, better, efficiently than what the USPS could do back then. Uh, but I mean, there is a way to kind of to always be kind of hold that more integrity against all violence, right? Not just uh, state violence, but the violence we do to each other, and especially and the violence honestly, that's. Like, uh, I'll put it this way: like, I don't like violence, but I understand there's occasionally a need for it. What what need would you find to initiate I'd force? I'd say that's what I'm trying to think. Is like, I don't like that we would probably have to initiate it, but I feel like if force comes to worse and the government tries to slam this down, I right. think at that point it's time. Right, yeah, uh, and I would say like uh, like Detroit, for example, two years ago, uh, like 47% of them just stopped paying property taxes, right? If we can kind of accumulate a number of people who are resistant to this government intervention in our lives, together as a community, you know, when we have enough uh, the strength power, we can all kind of stop paying taxes together, right? Yeah. That'll be a way of a community sense of protecting each other's property, uh, because it's essentially that's what we're, we're here for protecting, right? Uh, property rights begins with self-ownership. Government wants to make a claim that your body belongs to them. They can dictate what you can and cannot do with your body, but you can't tell the politicians the same thing, right? Yeah, politicians so, apparently are trying to be above the law, and that's what they don't like. Right. It's like with this whole like McDonald thing going on right now. Right. Like they're trying to embezzle all this money, and look where it got them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, 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 yeah. So, so we'll find it like that. If we're united with values, um, when you push these values forward, they don't go backwards, right? I don't know anyone today that advocates for slavery, right? I, mean, I wouldn't want it. I wouldn't want it either, right? We, we don't kind of go backwards in that, right? I mean, my boyfriend's Hispanic. I don't want that. Right. <laughs> I'm Latino. I wouldn't want that either. Yeah. So uh, essentially, all we have to do then is just universalize our values, right? That's called the non-aggression principle, right? If it's wrong and immoral for you to initiate force, or for him or I, then it's also wrong for someone in a blue costume or someone who with the title of a president, you know, drone bobbing children overseas, it's wrong and immoral for anyone to initiate that force, right? Uh, just re regardless of where they are, regardless of whether it occurred in the past or not, right? It's like slavery wasn't just wrong in the uh, 1800s, it was wrong before then, and it, was also, it still continues to be wrong today, yeah. right? Um, and that's essentially what we're pushing forward, I guess, non-politically. Uh, you know, politics is not going to set us free. Pulling up a uh, lever is not going to set us free. Uh, le that only legitimizes the government, the idea that you need a government, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So, uh, so that's, that's where we are, we're, what we're doing today. We're part of a non-political organization called Liberate RBA, uh, trying to, I guess, unite our community with these values. Uh, I guess when the moment comes, and together we can stand up and uh, stop paying taxes all together. Hi. Cool. Well, my name is Cal. Hi, Tori. Tori, pleasure to meet you. You know me, Matt. We both went to high school together. You know me. So that's the hidden violence, the immorality of government, that this organization only knows how to solve problems in one way, a singular way, and that's through the threat of and use of violence to solve any problems, versus, though, the plurality of non-violent solutions that us, us three here already share. So what are your thoughts on that? I mean that's pretty much spot on. You yeah. can just look at uh you can just look at the situation in Ferguson, like the <laughs> right? increasing like military just flat out militarization of police, that sort of thing. Right. I mean they're talking about like the Department of Education has their own SWAT team, yeah, Department of Agriculture. Oh my god. I don't know what they do. <laughs> oh. I hope it's nothing to do with student loans, right? Oh my! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but yeah, I mean, yeah. just just all that sort of stuff. It's crazy. No, that's very true. It's very brilliant. Yeah. Um, man, did you know that actually uh, the Supreme Court has ruled that the police do not have to provide you that protection. They have no obligation to provide you security. Did you know that? So a cop can see you being assaulted and they can just yeah. continue walking by. The only time they have an obligation is if you're detained in your custody. Right. Alright, so how do you feel then about being forced to pay for a security service and which they don't have to provide? I mean, it's definitely false advertising. Right? You know, yeah. To protect and serve sort of thing. Right. I mean, I guess 
neither of those really holds up. Right, what, that. Yeah, so. like if I came to your door, yeah. hey, I like to provide you a service, and we say, oh, we don't have to. And if we do screw up, we yeah. have uh, immunity from our own actions. You know, you can't sue the state prosecutor, you can't sue the judge, you know, you can't sue Obama. Yeah. So the, 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 the monopoly on security is extremely messed up because uh, there's no actual contract. They don't tell you what the service is they're going to provide. If you don't yeah. think they've provided it, there's no recourse for you to take and they can charge you whatever they want for that particular service. Nobody would ever actually agree to that if they had a choice. Uh. And so that's what government is subject to. They have a monopoly on the services uh, us three want. I want security. I want roads. I want uh, delivery of mail. I want uh, I want distilled spirits. They have a monopoly with that on ABC, right? The yeah. wholesale retail sale of uh, yeah. distilled spirits. Alcohol, right? Yeah. Uh, you have no freedom to cancel or unsubscribe as you would any other real business service, right? Like, like Netflix. Try to raise the prices a uh, few years ago, people canceled the subscribe went to Hulu. You have, you have, if you don't like Burger King, go to McDonald's, go to Cookout, right? You have choices. Yeah. When government has a monopoly on security on these services, you can't go anywhere else but USPS, yeah. right? FedEx and U, UPS and DHL can only deliver packages. It's illegal and criminal for you to compete against USPS. But because they have a monopoly on that, the cost of stamps always rises, and every time you have a monopoly, and quality depreciates. Like walk into your local post office and try to find a clock. Yeah. That's how they solve long waits in lines, by removing the clock so you don't have to see how long you've been waiting. Right. Uh, so, so that's what government is. Um, and so we, we advocate, uh, I guess we were talking about earlier, narco-capitalism. Right? Yeah, right. So, right. so anarchy, like in science, means anions and cations. An means without, archy means rulers, so without political rulers. Like monarchy means one political ruler, anarchy means without political rulers, without right. politicians, without strangers dictating how best their lives to be lived. Right. right. Uh, the capitalism part just means respect for, for property rights and voluntary exchange. Right. right. So a, a society based on consent. Right. You can't show me your contract with government. Right. Right. Uh, like the Constitution itself is not a contract, right? 37 people who signed a piece of paper before you were born, they did not have power of attorney, you know, to, to sign you over to Social Security, for example, right? Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah. So I guess so with, with that in mind, uh, what do you think of uh, anarcho-capitalism? I really found it, like, I, I got I mean, it definitely, I can definitely appreciate the, um, I mean, the idea that it's, especially, like, because the nature of capitalism, itself is to be like free market like no yeah. no restrictions anything like it's literally it's all it is it's an exchange of goods and services and you're not obliged to buy into anything unless you're getting something out of it right i mean it's just like if you said if you don't want to eat it um you know burger king you can go to taco bell you can go to any number of places you can go to food line buy your own ingredients and cook for yourself yeah you know if nobody's just providing what you're looking for yeah um so of course to to basically destabilize like the current um crony capitalism is the is the phrase that gets that is applied true. very true very days. true yeah yeah um, the, the only way to really do this you know the only way that you can employ is just pull the plug on the uh Inflow of money, and either they're going to have to adjust, or they will go under. Oh, that's beautiful. Okay, you you, you, you draw a, a great distinction between the two, right? Right. Yeah. Capitalists cease to exist when there's no government. There's yeah. no one to bribe, right? There's no legislation you can lobby against uh, your competitors, yeah. right? They have to exist on their own merits, finally, yeah. right? I mean, it's 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 almost unfair to even attach capitalism to, the to it at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah just like yeah. flat out. Yeah, just call them like cronies. They think they call it like capitalism. Yeah, 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 exactly. No, nice. That's beautiful. I'm glad yeah. you, you drew that distinction. Sometimes that's hard for people to, to draw. Yeah, that, that definitely throws people off yeah. big time. Um, we don't live in a free market. It's a state-controlled market. Yeah, I mean, especially when they're like, oh, big business, that sort of thing. Like, that only happens because they get that protected status. Right. Like, the, the you know, too big to fail. You right, know, and get subsidies, too. You know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, CEOs, uh, like, the, the Valdez always built up the coast of Alaska. The CEOs didn't lose their jobs, lose their money, lose their house, they didn't go to jail. They're able to offset yeah. the cost to employees by lowering the salaries. The yeah. consumers were raising consumer prices. Right. And they're granted the same immunity from their own actions as politicians have for themselves, right? Yeah. As state prosecutors and judges have for themselves, right? Yeah. So that's really that, what that is. It's like walking in an Iron Man so you know you can't get hurt walking across the street, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Nice, nice. That's beautiful, man. I'm Excellent. glad you, you stopped by. My name yeah, is Cal. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, sure thing. So we're part of a free market organization then, uh, Liberat RBA. It's a non-political yeah. organization. Right. Uh, so if you like, the, I guess, the, the books you, you've seen, uh, we do a lot of course studies on the subject. Uh, we have a lot of meetings and gatherings, potluck. And, uh, okay, excellent. Yeah, a hangout stuff like that. Would you like some pamphlets? Yeah, yeah. just some just some info, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. like when you guys are getting in. Right, so that's sure. the hidden violence behind government, that this organization only knows how to solve problems the one way, a singular way, and that's through the threat of and use of violence to solve any problems, versus so the plurality of nonviolent solutions that us three, us, us four here, already share.
So what are your thoughts on that? Um, I guess in a lot of ways you're right. Um, I do think that, I mean, there's some ways that they don't, like, suffer, like, they don't impose violence on you. Like, if, say, I don't pay my taxes, I go to court. You know, I'm not shot or anything. I do go to court eventually. I could be thrown in jail, which is right. Um, I do think a lot of things we do overseas is wrong. Um, yeah, I mean, for the most part, you have a pretty strong argument. I can't see any flaws. And my girlfriend's an anthropologist, so oh, really? oh, I always nice. hear about this. <laughs> yeah. Right. All right, cool, cool. All right. and, and that's what it is. Like, they'll, they'll prolong the inevitability that you will go to a case. Wesley Snipes didn't pay taxes. So if they could send him to a case for not paying taxes for three years, yeah. they could certainly send anyone else, right? They'll right. give you a fine. But if you don't pay that fine, well, we have a nice cage waiting for you, right? right. Uh, if, if you resist. Uh, so essentially what government is, uh, objectively, they have a monopoly on the services I want. I do want security. I do want roads. I do want uh, like delivery of mail, right? USPS uh, has yes. a monopoly on yep. first class mail. Yep, that's um, I do want distilled spirits. ABC has a monopoly on alcohol, right? Uh, however, it is criminal, uh, like, but I don't have a freedom to cancel or unsubscribe as I would from any other business because they have this monopoly, right? I don't even have the freedom to compete entrepreneurially against these monopolies. In order to provide you a better service, it's not going to be abusive or harmful to you, the consumer, right? So for example, it's illegal and uh, criminal for FedEx, UPS, and DHL to compete against USPS and their monopoly of mail, right? Yeah. Criminal. They could only deliver packages, right? So if you extrapolate that, but because they have that monopoly, the cost goes up, always rising with the cost of stamps, and the quality depreciates. I mean, walk into a local post office and try to find a clock. That's how they solve long waits in line, by, for you not noticing that you've been waiting in line for such a long time. But you go to a FedEx, you go to a UPS, it looks really nice, it looks well kept, you can look at the boxes outside, and so that's essentially what a free market would do. The free market would provide cheaper services with yeah. a higher quality, yeah. right? Yeah, I'm a big fan of free market. Yeah? Okay, so how would you define a free market? Um, to be able to buy and sell at your own will and like be able to set your own prices and things. Yeah. Like uh, the, even the ability to barter. Right. Um, I'm a big fan of that. I, I grew up, oh, I didn't grow up in England, but I was born in England, and you see a lot more some of that over there than you will here. Right, um, yeah. You'll see a lot more trades for goods and services and stuff like that. Nice, okay, so it's a respect for property rights, right? right. And, and voluntary exchange, right? right. Uh, and unfortunately, government doesn't respect your property rights, right? That's uh, true. So, because if they did, you know, they wouldn't uh, tax you in the first place, right? right. Uh, they would allow people, they would allow you to compete against USPS or against all the other monopolies that they have, right? Like, so for security, the Supreme Court has ruled that the police don't have to provide you security, right? Only when you're detained. So, like, it, imagine I'm coming to your door and say, hey, I would like to provide you security, but we don't have to provide it for you, right? And we're going to force you to pay for, for this contract. He's like, oh, get the hell out of my lawn, right? You know, get out of here, right? Uh, or you, you have the freedom to compete entrepreneurially against that monopoly of security, right? That's not going to be abusive or abrasive to you, the consumer, right? So, without a government monopoly on these services, right. you have freedom of uh, competition. Better quality, you know? Uh, right. Better, uh, cheap, yeah. cheaper, cheaper goods, yeah. right? Yeah, uh, no. So essentially, that's what we're advocating here. Okay. I'm part of a non-political organization, uh, Liberate RVA, a free market organization, okay. uh, trying to create a create a, a society based on consent, right? Because right. you don't have a contract with government, right? right? right. You can show me your contract with AT and T, uh, maybe with your car, your mortgage, but you can't show me a contract with government, right? Doesn't exist. It's true, right? It's true. So uh, I guess is that something? I guess uh, your, your thoughts are. Yes, furthermore, will that be something? I guess to to advocate for then, right? A society based yeah. on consent. Yeah, yeah. No, that's something I'm about. Yeah. Something I'm for. I, right. I'm a big fan of limited government. So right. Yeah. Okay. Right. Limited right. government. Right. So, no so government option. But so, well, so how, what, what would limited government mean for you? Um, I do think at some point you need like some sort of. Well, I don't know if you could really consider them neutral if they're still making money off of you. Um, right. But like, um, I would say a liber limited government is like a smaller size government. Like, doesn't have as much control over things like if you want to have votes on like I don't know gay marriage and stuff like that like that would be up to them but um, not as much power and control okay say. just like too much I'm not Sure. No, no, no. Okay, okay. All right. So, like a monopoly in law is what you're saying, uh, describing, right? right? Um, all right. So, so that's something that uh, you will not find in a free voluntary society. You'll have competition of dispute resolution, right? right. So you have thousands of communities catering to your lifestyle and preference. So you can have an apartment preference that has a rule of like cannabis not allowed. Great. One across the street with a rule that says you know 420 friendly. 
right? right? So you can have competition of rules. You can have a polycentric legal system, one that you actually give consent to the rules and laws, right? right. Uh, instead of like the majority voting their preference over you, you can have thousands of separate uh, free market competition societies, right? So I guess a limited government doesn't allow you to have the freedom though. Uh, like for, if you want to have a community that's uh, against gay people, great, here's a community for you, right? Uh, here's a community that actually is open-minded and appreciates everyone, tolerates everyone, right? Uh, so you can have those two comparative uh, legal systems, uh, like the Amish. The Amish have a legal yeah. system that's, uh, yeah. when the child, child turns up 18, uh, because they know babies can't give consent, uh, when they're of age, it's like, look, uh, would you want to, uh, I guess, support this legal system, right? And their only punishment is this social ostracism. So then you pretty much also agree to the consequences, right? Like you move to an apartment complex that says dogs are not allowed. If you bring a dog, though, it's like a $100 penalty fee, right? But you give consent, here's the contract, and I agree to the right. consequences, right? right? Okay. Yeah, so I guess uh, without any of that, you'd have, I guess, a freedom to, for you to create your own dispute right. resolution organization. Yes. All right, cool. Well, my name is Cal. What's your name? Cal. Cal. Yeah, like Jack. Cal Rickman with Matt. a K. Adam? Matt. Matt. Would you like some, I guess, uh, pamphlets? Um, sure, I'll yeah. take one. All right, cool, cool.